It's my pleasure to open a second panel discussion today. Uh, this is a panel discussion about entre entrepreneurship in Poland. And uh, we are in Poland and uh, uh, we think that it is important to discuss not only the state of liberty in politics, not only discuss the state of, of liberty in um, society, but also uh, the question of business, entrepreneurship, as um, the dynamics in business very often is correlated with liberty. And uh, you came here to Poland and you observe how this country looks like. Some of you were here before, some of you 10 years ago, some of you 20, and some of you even during the communist dark period. And you see Poland is changing. And uh, the most visible uh, change is what is the result of uh, productivity and creativity of the entrepreneurs. The private entrepreneurs, the ones who have power and strength to change the environment around us, to uh, convert what is around us into uh, value to value that others appreciate, others purchase their products, services, and value is created. And um, this is a bumpy road to capitalism. Uh, Poland, uh, Poland uh, changed the system, tra transferred from the communist system with centrally planned economy into market economy, largely free market economy, but not completely free market economy in 1989. But this was, as I said, a bumpy road. And it is still a bumpy road. Ups and downs. And uh, who are the best people to talk about the transformation, Polish road to capitalism, than the entrepreneurs themselves? And uh, we are extremely honored to welcome three entrepreneurs from Poland here at this panel. And uh, I will shortly introduce them. Uh, Mr. Jan Wojciech Kuban. He is here in a double role. He is both conventional entrepreneur and intellectual entrepreneur. Uh, for a longer period of time, he is a business guy who started a technology company in the software area called QBS Software. Uh, it was started in 1991 and until today he's head of the company. Um, it is flourishing, growing company in the computer, computer business in Poland. He's uh, employing around 30 people. And uh, I'm sure he will tell you about his experiences with business, but he will also uh, add the context of changing reality in Poland. He's also an intellectual entrepreneur because he's now the head of Pafere Foundation, who is the main partner of this conference, Liberty International World Conference. And Pafere Foundation is always supporting freedom for entrepreneurs, uh, better environment for doing business, freedom to do business, low taxes, low regulation, all these things that we hold dear, right, as freedom lovers. Uh, our second panelist is uh, Chris Hawadus, Krzysztof Hawadus. Nice well. Chris also has a broad experience uh, both in business and now in public administration as well. He's in both worlds. He uh, has two feet and these two feet are in two different worlds and he sees the relation and uh, he uh, works with people on both sides of the spectrum. Uh, he did run his private company for 24 years. Uh, the company has many different areas of activity. Some of them related to um, gardening business, uh, but he's also publisher of libertarian books. Some of them you can see here on the, uh, on the hall. You can buy, for example, uh, Ken Skoulin's uh, <coughs> Adventures of Jonathan Gullible in Polish language. You can also buy Free to Choose by Milton Friedman. Um, so, uh, as an entrepreneur, he, uh, he was active in many fields, uh, but he, is, he was also a deputy mayor of the city of Sosnowiec. This is a city of 
200,000 people, pretty big for, for Polish reality. And uh, this is a libertarian who was deputy mayor of a large Polish city. He could observe as person inside how the bureaucracy works and how hard it is to push the freedom agenda inside the political body. And I'm sure he will also mention this experience in his uh, presentation. Um, finally, Karol Skorek is... Bravo! <laughs> is representing uh, uh, an association of uh, local producers um, from uh, who are mostly the farmers, but also uh, micro-entrepreneurs who are concerned about um, uh, <clears throat> about helping each other, Polish entrepreneurs helping each other uh, and Polish customers uh, as, a, uh, as one body of uh, economic exchange. This uh, association is called Svojak and maybe later you will describe more what this association <laughs> is doing. Uh, Karol is also an uh, intellectual who writes quite a lot about um, the two, um, two different um, groups, but different from one, on one hand only, the nationalists and the liberals, but uh, the groups that used to work together in the history of Poland. And he will also mention this uh, interesting part of Polish history and nationalists worked together hand by hand with with classical liberals and what this um, coalition I would say uh, can teach us today and how it can be maybe transferred into today's reality so um, we will start with diagnose of the pro of the situation in, in Poland and I will start as from my right hand with uh, Wojtek Wojtek, I will ask you about your perspective about uh, changes of the environment for uh, business people in Poland uh, during the lifespan of your company, QBS Software. Uh, how, what is your intake on these changes and uh, especially what do you think about today's climate for business in Poland? Okay, thank you very much. I will start uh, what I, I think about today's climate. So during the communist regime was very, uh, in a very popular joke. Uh, it came from Czechoslovakia. Uh, Havranek it's a popular name in, in Czechoslovakia, and uh, one guy is asking Mr. Havranek, Mr. Havranek, we will soon have communism. The answer was, I am not afraid. I am deadly ill. I have a cancer. <laughs> so it's the same uh, with the situation in Poland. So I started uh, my company just when I went back from Switzerland. There I learned that uh, the wealth is coming from work and uh, work of hands and uh, work of head. And uh, I was passionate about programming. So I started my company. And, uh, you know, it's, I was born with uh, some motivation that I would like to do everything better, faster, and uh, in, a, in a better quality. So, I, so it was obvious that I will deal with the software for management of companies, for improving the performance, uh, performance of companies. So I started, I wasn't educated because I was an engineer and uh, I was educated in, in uh, guiding the missiles, anti-tank missiles. It was very interesting, but now I have to switch to guide my own company. So I have to learn a lot, a lot, a lot. I started it, it, this company in, let's say, 19, uh, 1989, already in Switzerland. And during the first 10 years, I learned a lot and I developed my company from two people uh, to about 20-25 people and it was I think the amazing time there were a lot of customers coming to my company and asking okay I, I have such a problem I would like to resolve it and you know I need the software may you develop this kind of software to me we said yes we can develop everything you can define if you define we will do this it was exceptional time I was uh, encircled by the people who wanted to improve to improve everything okay and they were a lot of them. We, we deal with the producers of um, fertilizer to the, to the plants, 
uh, with the bus producer, with uh, leasing companies, with banks, with medical uh, institutions, just everything. And uh, I would say that the, the pivoting point of, of this development of our possibilities in Poland was uh, the year 2000. Uh, in this period of time, the state became stronger, because before it was weak enough. And when they became stronger, they introduced subsidiarity of, uh, no, uh, uh, subsidiaries, yes? Subsidies. Subsidies, yes, subsidies, sorry. Subsidies. And we were encircled by the companies, you know, they do, did something and they were successful, but no one know, no, knew why they are successful, because their product were, wasn't the, the same quality as ours. Okay, and I think <clears throat> this process of uh, subsidizing and regulating the, the, uh, our uh, entrepreneurial activity is not going up and down, as you said, but it's going down all the time. So I think that my, so this joke about communism is right as far as our possibilities to be entrepreneurial in Poland uh, for the future. So I am now 60 years old and uh, you know, I am very sorry for the young people in Poland who start their businesses. Thank you, Jan. Uh, but um, I understand your point and uh, uh, I can agree that subsidies kill innovation and they send a counterproductive signal. But from the other hand, we observe that Polish economy is booming. We do have very positive growth, the lowest uh, unemployment ever. Polish companies uh, do you remember win the, are winning on the foreign markets. Do you remember the Why speech of Lawrence Street this morning? I do. Yeah, what did he say? That uh, every big um, uh, economical collapse was preceded by boom of economy, by this is, money. This is boom uh, I on think, drugs. I think so, yeah. Okay, so this is, uh, this is all artificial. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's, that's also an important intake. Maybe there will be questions, but Mati, I will open the floor for questions uh, a little bit later. I'm sure you will have a chance to ask the question. Uh, Chris, um, you, you did run the company for 24 years, and I'm sure these were interesting years. Uh, can you also share some interesting stories with the context of the changing situation in Poland? <coughs> yes, thank you for your invitation. When I'm visiting foreign countries and cities, I always ask myself, uh, from, from the people, citizens of this uh, country uh, take money. How do they earn? How do they live uh, to, to know them? So you came to Krakow, which is uh, probably the most, um, most uh, familiar city in Poland for tourists. The touristic branch in Krakow there is very strong and uh, the other cities are not so well prepared for foreign touristic but they look quite uh, similar we are really at uh, a very uh, big uh, for in, in our of course in our range um, stage of development uh, i heard that you began uh, in 1989 so the same the same year we we began and a lot of, of, of Polish uh, and I concluded that you belong to the, one of the group which I pointed when I analyzed the, the types because uh, now before the, change, the system changed uh, the agriculture was in private hands but other industry as it was also already mentioned uh, uh, it was mostly in uh, state. And how it began? Uh, Wojtek came back as emigrant from Switzerland with earned money. That time the exchange currency for uh, Polish Zwoty was so enormous that, uh, that, that there was so opportunity for people who, who have uh, uh, Switzerland francs, uh, Deutsche marks, German marks, uh, and uh, US dollars that he, for a very small amount of money you can buy very, very much of um, 
in, in Poland at that time. So there was the group who create these um, uh, enterprises who, who came back, po po Polish who came back. The second one was uh, the group which I belong uh, that find out that on the streets uh, suddenly everybody like to make business, to sell everything. It was my notice that I was finishing my study and I saw a lot of people at the streets, they sell everything. They, they were it meat, uh, TV set, uh, refrigerators, furniture, clothes, everything you can buy going on, on the streets. There was probably a couple of months uh, that, that it was allowed. So I, f I found it and said, oh, I, I would like to join, to, to make money also. And, and began from the trade of everything what can be bought and sell with, with some incomes. My firm has um, grown, uh, not as maybe Wojtek, but uh, in, in the um, biggest, um, it, we hired about 10, 15 uh, people. Uh, but third group of people who make this uh, picture, the, uh, our statement of uh, our economy, there was the people who were CEO or uh, they were a member of political party who, 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 get, who got the position which allowed them to buy or to get some property of, of, uh, of the state. Uh, they have knowledge, they have possibility, and they began their enterprises. During the year, uh, many firms fall down, uh, many of them stayed on the same position, and, uh, and a lot of them grew for, for, for a present size. And the fourth group, uh, which I want to point, is the, is the, is the other firm, foreign uh, capital which came to Poland and also joined to, to build this, um, this our e economy. So, uh, this I, I see uh, that what you can meet on the streets in Kraków, in, at other cities of Poland, uh, it was created by, by this four group of entrepreneurs and uh, I think that I, I don't agree with Wojtek that it is artificial. We have almost uh, no uh, unemployment rate. Uh, there are a lot of immigrants from Ukraine, especially, who came to Poland because uh, there is no, not a problem to get a job. The, only the question is to what, what kind of the job, what salary is, but you can every day uh, get uh, the job. If I try to compare the present situation to other foreign, foreign countries, I see that our taxation system is still too complicated, too, 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 too much, uh, but uh, it's, it's quite enough to, to, to make uh, possibilities to grow. And Jacek also asked me to uh, share with you some experience that is uh, with my um, serving as deputy mayor. But I am afraid it's uh, quite a long story for another uh, panel. Uh, what, what can I say? Uh, in the offices, uh, people, they, they work the same people. But in their mass, they are practice uh, the rules made by politicians and they execute just the rules they are. They don't think a lot, they just execute uh, the, the, the laws which is created uh, in, in the parliament. So the, there is the place which should be uh, changed, but I encourage these people that because they, they know the stupidness of something, but they say, oh, I just do it. So I encourage a lot of them to, because you see this stupidness, you see this uh, waste of time, waste of people's energy, 
just propose the solutions how to change the uh, the law to make it easier to make it more uh, simply for 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 people so there is my uh, general uh, opinion and general myth uh, about um, this this my service thank you thank you so uh, we can say that the body of Polish economy is so strong, thanks to entrepreneurs, thanks to people like you, that even the hardest drugs that government is putting into this body still cannot kill the economy. <laughs> Can I, you say that? I, I observe uh, with... Um, uh, I, I'm not lucky what, what happens during the last uh, year, especially, when new, uh, new regulations uh, are proposing it's a danger for Polish economy, economy, and there are a lot of words about to make it easier, but in fact, uh, they find new uh, new taxes, new uh, new regulations. Uh, it, there is not uh, and also what was mentioned, they find out to buy uh, uh, private enterprises. For, for government, it's stupid, road and doesn't doesn't way for 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 good solutions. Thank you, Chris. Um, and now I would want uh, Carol to give his insights. And I know you want to tell us a little bit about this alliance of nationalists and liberals. That's right. And uh, it's very interesting. So please. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I feel honored that I can be with here, here with you today. Uh, for me, Liberty International World Conference is another example uh, that Freedom and Entrepreneurship Foundation is a leader in terms of professionalism. As a president of the Entrepreneurs and Farmers Association, Swojak, I have always admired executives of Freedom and Entrepreneurship Foundation for their commitment, for their hard work. This movie about Kraków School of Economics is a marvelous job. That, that shows people all around the world that Polish people have free market intellectual traditions and we have nothing to be ashamed of. I have mentioned Kraków School of Economics. Uh, two of its members were not exactly enthusiasts of classical liberalism or conservatism or libertarianism. In fact, they should be described as national liberals. I'm talking about Adam Heidel and Roman Rybarski. We have here guests from many parts of the world here, so I would like to explain a few definitions. I would like to avoid misunderstandings that arise from cultural differences. Nationalism is a political ideology that recognizes the good of the nation as the basis of public activity. Patriotism is a feeling of love towards the motherland. Liberalism is an ideology that recognizes freedom as a supreme value. National liberals are nationalists who believe that the nation should be given as much freedom as possible. When I talk about liberals, I think about European terminologies. As far as I know, in America, liberals mean support of a democratic party. I don't want to define what the nation is and what freedom is. These are the topics for the separate meeting. Historically, nationalism as a political doctrine was born during the Great French Revolution. There was two political clubs, which represent different forms of nationalism. Jacobins were a revolutionary political movement that was the most famous political club during the French Revolution. We could say that they were intellectually progenitors of later national socialists. Maximilien de Robespierre was in fact a dictator, a French fearer chosen by the nation to perform revolutionary terror on its enemies. The Jacobins used nationalism as sword and shield to fight the kingdom and the church. The idea of nationalism was a common identity above regional, religious and feudal identities and they claimed citizenship should be based on equality. There is also a second political club which represents the progenitors of national liberals. There was Gironde. The Gironde was the expression of the lesser nobility, landowners and the bourgeoisie. In its early times of government, the Gironde supported the free market and aggressive foreign policies as well as Napoleon Bonaparte wars. National liberals are not classical liberals, it's obvious. So what are the differences between these two political di directions? The first difference, the classical liberals are cosmopolitans. They believe that individual rights and freedom should be given to all humans. National liberals are patriots. We can have rights and freedom, but they should belong to my people. The second difference, 
For national liberal freedom is just secondary. First the nation goes and then goes freedom. If there is a contradiction between nation and freedom, the national liberal chooses the nation. In general, the maximi maximization of freedom warranties the well-being of nation. However, not always. I will give you an example. Adam Heidel, an economist of the Krakow School of Economists, believed that drugs should be banned. I believe that no libertarian would agree with him in this matter. In private, I also disagree with uh, Heidel in this matter. Uh, once upon a time, in uh, Europe far, far away, national liberalism was one of the most popular ideologies of the elite. The parties with such program had many seats in the parliament. Their representatives were considered to be serious people. So what went wrong? In my personal opinion, with the introduction of universal voting rights, the era of the left wing have begun. There is this quote attributed to Karl Marx that democracy is the road to socialism. There is a point in this, because most of world societies don't want, does not want capitalism. Most people want public education, healthcare, guaranteed income, labor laws, etc. etc. As long as there were election censuses, the right wing ruled the European parliaments. One of them, for example, was that only landowners could vote. In today's world, there are only a few active national liberal parties with minor impact on public life. We can find such parties in El Salvador, Lebanon, Moldavia, Panama, Romania, UK. They don't play a significant role in public life. There is much longer list of default national liberal parties in Australia, Bermuda, Bulgaria, Denmark, Estonia, Germany, Hungary, Bohemia, Romania, and there was also a default national liberal party in the United Kingdom and in Hawaii. We can also find modern parties which refer to national liberal rhetoric, for example in Czech Republic, the post-communist conservative civic democratic party, it's described as national liberal, in Slovakia it's freedom and solidarity, and when I listen to, for example, President Donald Trump, I also have the impression that he refers to national liberal rhetoric, for example, on the one hand he says that the regulations and taxes are bad, and on the second hand he's not a great fan of China and he has no problem with installing tariffs. There is an ongoing consumer com patriotist campaign supported by President Trump and by American Higher American. And what about so-called alternative right? This movement is a rejection of a mainstream right and is also an interesting combination of nationalist and libertarian rhetoric. In the past, national movements and free market libertarian movements were allies. I believe that such an alliance can be once again included with benefits for both parties. The spirit of national liberalism is mainly about courage, patriotism, honor, fight. I think that these are the values that, are, that freedom supporters need to adapt. Just like during the Boston Tea Party, we are sorry, but we believe in no taxation without representation. We are going to throw all the tea from the British ships to the deep ocean, and what you are going to do about it. That's the true American spirit I have always admired. If you want to be a free man, you must fight for your freedom. And that is the main conclusion of my today's speech. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. Carol is a very courageous man indeed, because uh, he is representing uh, a national liberal wing, uh, something different than libertarianism. He, he uh, described this ideology very, very broadly. Uh, we admire this. I'm uh, sorry, but I feel like a sheep that came into the cave of libertarian lions, and I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> no one of you bites me. I did not want to say that. I, I really admire this, but it's also very nice because we can have uh, a live discussion, I'm pretty sure, and uh, very soon we will open the, uh, this discussion to, uh, to the public. But I have now very short, this time, questions, really try to answer in two minutes or so, yes, uh, to you, and then later we open the floor discussion. I want to start with Wojtek. Um, um, and before I start, I will uh, mention my own experience, because I'm running this Freedom and Entrepreneurship Foundation since 2012. And at the beginning, I realized that I do talk a lot about taxes, regulation, and so on, but I never did run any company. And uh, I believe that what I find in the Austrian books, free market, Publications is true, but I couldn't really prove to people that I lived it through and it really works as, it, as, as we state. So I opened a company. I was um, having a pizzeria, a pizza food truck and small restaurant in the city of Katowice. I did run it for four years. I sold it last December. 
and uh, I realized how hard it is to run business in Poland, um, especially gastronomic business. Mm -hmm. Probably it's, it might be easier if you have an online business, I think, but gastronomic business is really tough. Uh, we had our victories, we had our downfalls, but one of, the, one of the things that I realized that is very tough when it comes to uh, running a business in Poland is the question which is not uh, strictly related to the state. I'm talking about the work ethics. Um, and w uh, in my foundation, I don't have this problem. I'm meeting intelligent young people, passionate for liberty, and usually very nice people who, um, who do what they, what they promise, right? In the pizza business, I encountered a number of people who were not very ethical. They, they were uh, cheating when you don't see them. They were um, thinking that they, this unethical behavior is uh, acceptable because it's uh, a way to show that you are tricky and you are smart. Something like that. I heard explanations like that. It shocked me a lot. And that, uh, that was a life lesson. And my question to Wojtek is, um, what's your intake about this? My personal belief is that this is heritage from communism. But you run company not four years, but 20, what, 30. 29 years, yeah. 30 years. You know much more than me. And uh, can you give us a, a short insight about the, the work ethics in Poland and the, how it is changing? Okay, as you know, I have written the book The Physics of Life. Uh, it deals with uh, life in general. When I worked in Switzerland, they were, uh, the factory was owned by two brothers. One was very tough and another one was very, let's say, soft. And uh, this tough guy was present almost all the time in the factory and the factory worked perfectly. Everybody was stood in, uh, behind his tool and everybody was working, you know, it was very nice even to see it. But uh, he has some time to do his haircut every three weeks. He was very precise as the Swiss are. So every <laughs> three weeks, every Wednesday, at, at the midday, he went to his uh, haircutter for one hour and a half. And in this period of time, all the workers started to walk. You know, they walk, they started to talk. Uh, so I saw, okay, they work uh, pretty much as, as in Poland, uh, the same situation is. So I will not generalize. Okay, so we have some uh, heritage from, uh, from um, communism, but the people are people. If they can cheat without any uh, punishment, uh, majority of them are doing this. Okay, so... Uh, so you know, we, we have to defend ourselves, so there are some procedures, there is recruitment, recruitment not only we are performing it, uh, this in, within two hours or three hours, but uh, we have some uh, probatory, yes, uh, we probe them uh, in three months, we see how do they work, we, we make some, uh, the, the task more and more complicated, more responsible, and we observe these people. So only after a certain period of time we propose that, okay, you can stay because you are reliable enough, uh, you have to learn a lot, and so on and so on. So I think, you know, people are people and entrepreneurs should know about this and should learn how to deal with this problem. Thank you. Yeah, Nancy asked uh, you for two minutes, so I only add trust, but control. Okay. <laughs> yes. uh, I want to um, I want to touch a, a question that or topic that you also touched before the immigration and economy. Um, you mentioned that we do have a big influx of immigrants to Poland, uh, people who come uh, in big numbers from Ukraine. I think we talk about around one million people. Uh, now also other nations, usually from uh, Eastern Europe or even Asia, are coming here. This is something new for Polish economy, and uh, uh, especially on the right wing, we see a debate. Uh, people who tend to be more classical liberal or libertarian, they usually say this is a sign of healthy economy, and uh, unless they work, this is great. Let's have more. Let's have more productive immigration, but uh, we sometimes also see voices from the alt-right or people who are more concerned about the cultural aspects, other aspects, or, or also they claim 
that this may cause the salary dumping, this may cause uh, some negative um, responses for the Polish workers and it can be a danger in the long term. Um, do you have your own thoughts about this immigration situation and would you encourage more of it or less and why? I will not uh, take the bread from Ken Skulan, who will be talking tomorrow <laughs> on this topic, I suppose. So I'm very interested uh, in, in what uh, Ken will say. Uh, my opinion is um, like that. Uh, all the time when the guests come to, to, the, to the country and he likes to work, he likes to respect the uh, culture of, of uh, people who live there, they are welcome, for, in my opinion. When they try to uh, violence these uh, manners, this culture, and the law, uh, they are less welcome. <laughs> so that's my opinion. Especially if we say about Ukraines, uh, they, uh, their language is uh, quite similar to Polish, they understand us, we uh, they very easily uh, learn uh, Polish. Uh, the people who I met, I, I know that some Ukrainians are also uh, c come here to, to make some rubber, but uh, are, I, I suppose the, not the uh, there is minority of them and not much than, than, than Polish do. So uh, I s think it's uh, for our society, for our country, uh, a good phenomenon. Thanks, Chris. And Karol, um, um, would you like to give us uh, your comment about this, uh, about the question of immigration and also um, I know that you are uh, you are writing and uh, discussing the question of grey market in Poland. Right. Uh, people may might not know people from abroad <laughs> that we have pretty large scale of grey market uh, here in Poland and what the statistics show. You know, according to statistics, Poland is only <coughs> average Polish citizen is like three or four times poorer than German. But if you look at how Polish people live, uh, what cars they ride, and you see Germans, you would say, yes, they are poorer, but I don't think four times poorer. Uh, there's a lot of wealth that is not documented in this country. That's pretty agoristic about Polish society. Uh, maybe any insights about this? Okay, so the first question about immigration. I will give you an interesting tip uh, from the history. So, Polish nationalism was created by the free men. And I want to talk about one of him. He was called Zygmunt Balicki. And we could say that, oh, he's a nationalist, he must hate the immigration. And this man was claiming the opposite. He was pro-immigration. He was saying that immigration is strengthening the nation. For example, there are uh, Amish people, right, in the United States of America, and they have problem with genetic sickness, right? And uh, he, he was arguing that letting immigration in would strengthen the nation, there would be less and less disease. And the second part of the question, we are about this uh, grey market. Uh, there was this madame in the audience and she was saying, oh, what's the problem with you guys? This uh, Krakow is such a beautiful city, I was uh, going to the streets, there were so many flourishing business, what's the problem? So, uh, there is uh, the, this, this the question of the, this is one, the one hand, there is also the second hand, when you see the booking accounts of these companies, it's not so great. I often met with entrepreneurs, I live on a daily basis at a much smaller city, Sanov, it's 30, 40,000 people in there, and I talk with these entrepreneurs and they say, we have great problems with compulsory social security charge, tak? We, are, we can't do business because it's just too high. And that's uh, on, there is also one problem that um, we, uh, Kraków is the uh, second bi biggest city in Poland, right? So making business in a province in a smaller city is a completely different thing. When I'm walking through the streets of Sanok, a city I live in uh, to, uh, on a daily basis, there is a lot of uh, 
a lot of um, information at the glasses that is uh, for hire, right? So, so the the businesses last like few months mostly, like new businesses. Hmm. So we struggle, uh, and uh, so the the gray the gray market is also uh, a result of too high taxes, too high regulation, and people in order to meet the ends they find a gray market solution. Um, that's that, the that's important observation about Poland. Uh, now, dear audience, uh, as we still have around 15-20 minutes, I want to open the floor for questions, because I'm sure you have them. And Mati will be first, as he raised his hands <laughs> much earlier. So, um, you're talking about artificial economy and how you think that once it's going to be crashing, it's going to be a big crash. Uh, there was also a big crash in 2007, 2008. I was too young to really feel about it. I can only sort of talk talk about it uh, from what I read. And from what I've read is that while a lot of countries like the West Europe got really deeply affected, Poland emerged like okay with it. And even that you said like the subsidy in 2001, government regulation came along like seven years before the actual crash. So, why do you think that Poland didn't have a massive, as a big crash as other countries? Is this a question to Wojtek, who yes. touched the question? What is the question? Before? Once again, <laughs> in short, he asked why, in short, why Poland was not so much affected by 2008 crisis, and uh, especially that I they think, think that, that they were <laughs> kids soon. Uh, several reasons. So, uh, the first reason was that the, our agriculture was in the private hands first a very strong position of Catholic Church. It was some uh, places to, to hide and to discuss. But 2008 crisis you are describing? Ah, 2008, yes. yes. Why 2008 was so okay to Poland when you and you now saying that uh, no this idea. crisis in Poland... We Sorry, no idea. The same. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. Uh, I'm not the economist who, who search, uh, who, who make uh, some professional searching, but I suppose that maybe the answer is that there is our weak side, but also the strong side, that we have a lot of small companies that can uh, easily, easier adapt to the changing uh, of, of, of needs. So maybe this is the... the, this is the uh, part of the answer. The second was, uh, one, uh, one is that we have uh, our own currency which could uh, help us to uh, export goods uh, and, and uh, be still attractive. And uh, I suppose maybe that these are, you know, I said that uh, a lot of small business is the strong uh, side, but also the weak because it's difficult for small uh, business to compete on the uh, global market. So the, there is also the weak side of that. But I suppose maybe these uh, two reasons. We are still hungry of success, Polish people. We still want to, to fight. I see some, uh, some Western countries, they, uh, already, uh, they are already um, not hungry, that they, they, have, uh, they are lazy, they have a lot of things, so uh, when the crisis comes, they are looking, they are make, uh, n n n they, they, they don't think it's, it's fair, they discuss, but we try to still to fight a lot of our entrepreneurs. Thanks Chris. Uh, other questions? I see Ken's hands. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm curious, uh, you mentioned uh, the immigrants coming in and of course many are getting jobs. Many probably are, are facing a lot of obstacles and the businesses have a lot of bureaucratic obstacles for them to hire people. I mean, can they, can they hire whoever they want or are, they, are there taxes like the social security tax you mentioned but are there many other taxes and regulations and licenses and things that make it difficult to just use your own money to hire whomever you want? Who wants to take this question? So there are so many regulations that if you want to follow all of them, you, you cannot make uh, any business. You, you just uh, maybe fulfill uh, half of them, and, and <laughs> yes, it's true. It's true. So uh, even if uh, the accountant accountability regulations, so we have you know we we hire the uh, an office who deal with this. 
with a very clever uh, bunch of women who are really specialists because they run this company since uh, 20 years. And they now nowadays they said, with, with Rodo, we don't know. Okay, let's wait for the control, and if we are caught, we will invent something. <laughs> so, yeah, so we should be. So I said that I am very sorry for the young entrepreneur. If you are young, you are not aware what is in front of you. So you are doing this as I did during the communist regime. I just started to do my business. I just sewed the harnesses for for climbing, and you know all all devices uh, for climbing. I, I didn't know that there were some regulations that I had to pay some taxes or something like this. Just I did it. The people come to me. I, I gave them product. They gave me a money. That's all. Okay. So it's a little bit uh, such a situation nowadays. There is a dark side of, of um, Polish economy. Uh, I agree with uh, Wojtek that uh, you will never be sure that when control comes, they will find uh, something on you. And it depends whether they want to destroy you or just to get, get some money from you. Yes? <laughs> That's uh, true. And, and uh, I agree with Wojtek, and uh, this is also uh, my own experience, that we try to avoid obstacles, avoid uh, um, problems, but we never are sure that we, we can find them. And uh, according to Ukrainians and immigrants to Poland, there are agencies uh, who specialize themselves with uh, uh, import immigrants they they um, so uh, the, the firm normal firm uh, rather very rare uh, employ them um, but they they use uh, the agencies so they they know these all regulations which should be uh, should be done to, to, to do it uh, in the right way Carol, would you like to add something? No. I want to add something. Uh, I had an um, experience uh, uh, employing um, a Russian uh, gentleman and Nigerian gentleman. So I know how it works in Poland. And uh, yes, there are, uh, there are some procedures. It's not like they come to you and you can employ them like a Polish citizen. It's not that easy, but it's still much easier than in the United States. Uh, I know a little bit about this and uh, this all green card stories. This is this is horrible, and this is one of the reasons you have so much illegal immigration. You have too much illegal immigration, but having legal path to immigration would reduce it. <laughs> Coming back to Poland, you need to um, uh, first you need to um, uh, legalize the immig immigrant working immigrant for a um, uh, couple of months, usually six months, based on working visa, and. Uh, you need to get a special document proving that there is nobody from Poland, Polish citizen, who can do similar job. So that sounds bad, right? I, I also believe it sounds bad and this is the discrimination we don't like. We, 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 we can uh, agree with private discrimination because it's part of life, but this is, part, this is the public one, uh, government one, not good. But my experience is uh, uh, that the bureaucrat from the um, uh, job agency, government job agency, who is supposed to post this uh, job offer and then wait uh, until you get or not uh, offers from the Polish workers and then that will determine if the applicant from abroad can get uh, a permit or not. I have positive experience. The guy told me, the, he, he told me how to write this offer in order not to find Polish workers. <laughs> he said, please write it that way and we need to wait two weeks, this is the shortest period, and I will let you know, I will call you, that now you can hire. <laughs> So he was uh, assisting. Not all of the bureaucrats are so bad, I need to say. <laughs> bureaucrats are like uh, other people. They, they just have a strange job, uh, which is monopoly. Uh, and, uh, but they are, as a nature, uh, they, are, they, are, they are normal people, like everywhere, good and bad. Um, so after you uh, get this uh, feedback that there was nobody to apply for this job, 
you go to specific office, you, you pay maybe 100 bucks and it's pretty easy then, later. Can you like to work in Poland? Yeah. <laughs> how, how should I write uh, a Soviet uh, uh, For example, I was employing a Nigerian gentleman for this Freedom and Entrepreneurship Foundation and the job this, uh, described was that we need a, a, a lecturer who is specialized in economies of West Africa. <laughs> And nobody applies. <laughs> we legalize him. It's possible. Okay. And that's what the most important. You pay the minimum wage, right? Of course, I pay the, the minimum wage uh, officially. Officially. Yeah, <laughs> I see a lot of hands. Uh, let's start with Let's start with James. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the panelists for a very interesting presentation. To what extent is the is there a major push for an intellectual case for regulation. And I ask for the following reason. In, in my country, in the United States, there are many arguments put forward on prudential basis as to why we should have regulation. For example, certain regulations, the, the legal theory is that the business that designs the product has a better idea of what might go wrong with it, so we'll put the liability on the business rather than allowing essentially caveat emptor. It sounds to me as if an awful lot of what goes on in terms of justification regulation in other countries is basically window dressing for a form of gangsterism. In other words, that the regulators are able basically to extract rents, uh, either to favor one industry or to favor, in many cases, the regulators. I'm asking you for sort of a, 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 a seat of the pants uh, perspective. Is it that the, the, the push for regulation or the maintenance of regulation in Poland is to preserve the, the parasitism, the gangsterism, or are there really serious intellectual arguments that you'll have to overcome if you want to move forward toward more an entrepreneurial society? Any specific panelists you want to uh, yeah, answer all, the all of these, all yeah, these so splendid people. Are okay. So, you know, I think that uh, I'm running my own company and I saw that if I regulate too much, I, I should have some regulations, but, but not so much. If you're, I regulate too much, it costs me a lot and the productivity is going down. So my company is some kind of uh, managed as Swiss are managing their own country, something like you know, direct democracy. But uh, not all of the employees can, uh, can uh, come with the initiative, new initiative. Only those who work, uh, let's say, at least two or three years have some experience so they can, they can influence our, our productivity. I think that there is natural drive in the people who are in power to regulate everything. They think that if they regulate, it will work good. Okay? So there is two kinds of uh, breathing. No. Um, parenting. Yeah, parenting. Not parenting. Breathing. Breathing. Okay. So uh, you have. Uh, Small birds. <laughs> small birds. Small birds in your nest, and you are the parent of them. So, for the very beginning, you should feed them. Okay, you should bring some insects and, and feed them and, and uh, or take care of them. And, and but uh, it comes the moment when you have to push them out from this nest. And this is, uh, let's say, uh, the parents in the modern world forget about this. Okay. So they, they want to breed their uh, children all the time, even if they are 40 years old, okay, <laughs> they are still uh, paid by their mummies or, or daddies. So this is, I think, uh, very important. The people who get power are not educated and they are not, uh, they are simply have no experience how to run the business. They don't feel money, that uh, everything costs, and they think, if I regulate, if I have a bunch of um, employees, state employees, I pay them salary, everything will be okay. Yeah. What, what uh, can I add? <clears throat> I see the big problem uh, with education. Because, as uh, Wojtek said, uh, the teachers have no experience of, of business. Most teachers have no experience of business. They, uh, I, I say it straight, they don't know where the money comes from. Uh, they, they, they think that they, they, they are on their account every month and it's the normal situation. But in the market, you need to fight 
you need to find, uh, you need to uh, supply something what people like to pay for. And uh, th there is, uh, I suppose, the problem uh, because teachers are very far from business experience and schools, uh, our system, uh, is not uh, suitable for, for the free market. It's a fossil. Uh, uh, it's a fossil. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. no, no. Okay. Um, next question. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Laura. She's in the corner. So I want to go back to the question of the low unemployment rate and yeah. Polish economic fundamentals. So I don't know anything about the Polish economy, but it is my understanding that in much of the developed world, the unemployment rate is very low compared to history because the European Union and the U.S. have both been, um, have had excessively easy monetary policy for a long time, which has created booms in their own regions, but also spilled over to other countries through higher demand for their exports. So, like, for example, the unemployment rate in the U.S. is, like, as low as it's been since 1960, but that's been because of 10 years of very accommodative monetary policy, not because the U.S. labor market has somehow become fundamentally much stronger in the past five years. So while I don't know anything about the Polish economy, I'm skeptical of the claim that the low unemployment rate is reflective of just suddenly much stronger economic fundamentals. So if you think that that's true, what reason is there to believe that the low unemployment rate, rate reflects uh, good fundamentals and not just a boom? Uh, a lot of Polish people emigrated uh, from Poland. There is the one reason of, of, of this um, low uh, rate. Uh, the second one is that uh, during the years, uh, the all things which which uh, which are make uh, economy grew. Uh, and it was not the rapid uh, structure. It was it was slowly. But now we get fruits of, of, of them, uh, and more and more. Uh, for example, Amazon, which is known uh, famous firm uh, in my city, which is two uh, hundred thousand inhabitants. Uh, a year ago, they built uh, their warehouse, and now they employ uh, three thousand uh, workers, three thousand people. Uh, with quite a good salary according to Polish uh, uh, circumstances. So, uh, a, a lot of new factories is uh, building services, so there is the, the reason uh, of, of the unemployment. I'm not sure whether it's uh, the answer straight on your question, but there is the reason which I see for, uh, for this uh, small rate. Uh, there is also another side of this, the same coin. Uh, I will uh, tell you a story. My ex-secretary is running a transportation company and she is complaining that after the introduction of this uh, 500 plus program, which means that if you have uh, more than uh, two babies, you will receive 500 zlotys per baby every month. She said that every, uh, a lot of drivers just quit the, the work because they live in the countryside, they have small houses and big uh, grounds, they can cultivate their, their own vegetables, chicken and so on and so on, so they don't need to work, so they quit. And she says now, okay, my best employee who earns a lot, it's a Ukrainian, because when I propose him to work on Sundays and uh, Saturdays, he accepts, and the Poles, no. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, 200,000 women uh, quit the job market as a result of the 500 plus program as well. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, Oliver, uh, that's your time. Yeah, I'd like, since it's a panel discussion, I'd like to begin by disagreeing with the premise of the young lady back here that the unemployment rate in the United States began to drop because of accommodative monetary policy. Uh, the unemployment rate suddenly has turned upward, uh, downward, because of the increase in jobs that are being produced, resulting from the tax decrease. It, the accommodation of the monetary system is actually working in the opposite direction. It is being tightened while unemployment is dropping. So it's going back to something that Larry said earlier this morning. Uh, monetary policy is not driving our economy at all. 
it is in fact an inhibitor in many cases, and uh, it is the the uh, fiscal responsibility being shown by tax cuts that is driving the boom in the American economy. I'm actually going to just short reply from Laura. <laughs> 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 we switched the comment. It's about 4.5 percent. The actual rate of unemployment in the U.S. hit 4.1 percent, far below natural in about November because of many years of accommodating monetary policy. Negative. <laughs> the balance sheet tightening of the Federal Reserve has been accelerating since October, and that has been a tightening pressure, but the unemployment rate has continued to drop and was on a clear debt perspective before then. The tax cuts happened in February and disproportionately went not to new jobs, but to buybacks and increased social problems. It, it is business anticipation. Business is looking forward to where they can go in terms of their profit that is being now excited by the tax increase long before the actual and tax increase and deregulation. Mm -hmm. Those two things going together, which are basically libertarian principles, those are what are driving our boom in an economy. The, the, the uh, central bank is trailing all of that. It doesn't leave it, it is trailing it. And it is basically going to screw it up if we let them keep going. Quantitative easing okay. happened like 2008 to 2014. That's so I Stop this that. American panel, please. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, it was interesting exchange, but let's come back to Polish entrepreneurship. Uh, I see Randy. Okay. Just uh, what for a str uh, strong entrepreneurial environment, you generally require pretty strong capital markets. Are all these regulations you're talking about, are they driving the capital away, or is Capital for an entrepreneur to start, like we venture capitalists and so on in our country. Do you have a good sort of pool of capital? So, so I cannot answer this question because I run my uh, company from scratches. I, I did never loan money. I earn everything what I earn. I uh, consumed, mm -hmm. and later, <laughs> if, uh, there were uh, there were some remaining. I need uh, reinvested. Okay, so my company is let's say pure in in this. Uh, yeah. There is what I mentioned, that is the weakness of, of our economy, that we have not still uh, developed um, uh, venture uh, capital and we can uh, operate on the small or medium market, but it's difficult for us to, to go up. up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Karol, you want to add something about this? So the topic was about the regulations. I uh, work as a, uh, I have a very socialist job. I work as an occupational health and safety specialist. Uh, so I advise employers how can they meet the standards of the Polish law. For example, I work at the employer which uh, which employs 3,000 employees, right? And he have few hundred machines, and. Half of these machines do not require so-called minimal standards of the Polish law, and in any time, and any time the inspector of government inspector can come in and sh close close the machine and say sorry, I'm giving you a fine. That's just an example. <laughs> this, is the, this is the part what we say that <laughs> there are so many regulations that um, it's difficult to to, to make it uh, er everything. Ever. So they are the, not there the, to help you. They are there to stop your business. The, the big benefit of po Polish uh, state officials are they are lazy, so they you know they have no time. <laughs> they prefer to go for a long weekend, more long weekend, and so on, instead of coming and, and checking and. and and I see it's sometimes it it uh, it's enough to wait because they make regulation after six months on the year they see it doesn't work they just uh, withdraw withdraw <laughs> so it's sometimes it's be be the best way to, to wait. Two last questions. First year. Uh, in the states, uh, I go from the United States and in California we have local taxation. And, and so a city can tax and set its own rules. How uh, homogeneous are Polish uh, rules of operation? Do you, are, do you get have to meet criteria locally and then in a broader area? And so uh, there is only the, the local taxes are only from property, and there is the limit of, of it, <laughs> not on the, the big uh, uh, level. It is. Um, 
and from from the enterprises it's uh, for us one square meter 20 watt per per year of the of the company when you uh, run a firm it's the biggest biggest one uh, tax and uh, from the property which is uh, for buildings for, for, for flats it's about um, one watt per year per square meter it's nothing it's, it's, it's almost nothing and, and local, lo local government uh, cannot uh, make any, any taxation, any additional taxation. Uh, there are only the state taxation. Yes, but I would like that uh, local government can make taxation and make surplus to the federal state. So it's my dream, but for the time being uh, all the taxes are regulated on the top level and are the same. And uh, this is not right because uh, in the small cities or in villages they pay the same amount, for example, uh, for the health care as we in Warsaw. And in Warsaw it's uh, far better to find the, the good job than in Sanok. Right. It's a very centralized country. It's, it's uh, one of the most centralized in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, yes, please? Can I take a question? Uh, Poland has sales taxes. It has taxes on income. Has taxes on property. Does it have wealth tax? Wealth? Like 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 France or Switzerland. A, a, a tax on your wealth. On your uh, no, not yet. Additional tax? Not yet. Not yet. No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> There's a future possibility. Don't, please, please don't tell them in Warsaw because they are eager to introduce. Yeah. Uh, not yet. Not so yet. Uh, they are uh, they are talking about this uh, for ten years, I think, something like this. Yes, but not yet. Not yet. <laughs> so you know we can compare because uh, it's not so bad as tax. But uh, when I was recently in Ecuador, so they have VAT. It's about uh, twelve or, or eighteen percent, and they have this uh, wealth tax. It's uh, let's say. Uh, half of the percent per year per, per value of your property. Uh, they were they introduced this kind of tax because they have uh, uh, big landowners. So it was yeah. <laughs> um, but Mati was before you can and uh, you can ask. Yeah, I think I can ask a question. But my question was is to follow up of what you said. Is the hiring is the a regulation of hiring migrants only apply to outside the EU, or does it apply also to the people within the EU? So, like, can you hire a, a, a person from Germany uh, without having to prove that a Polish person can do the job? I can take this question. Uh, when it comes to foreigners from European Union, the, there is no additional procedure. It's as easy as to hire Polish citizens. Uh, these procedures apply for non-European Union citizens. Except for those who have the Carta Polaka. Uh, except for those who live in uh, east from Poland, usually Belarus, um, Ukraine, I think Kazakhstan, and can prove that they have Polish heritage, and this is called Carta Polaka, Polish card. These, uh, these people have a uh, shortcut for, for this uh, uh, work application and the procedure is easier. This is the, the last question will come from Ken. With one regulation, would the, uh, the economy of Poland be improved tremendously, meaning a prohibition on employers getting haircuts every three weeks? <laughs> 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 thank you for your advice. <laughs> okay, wonderful. I want to thank our panelists and you the audience.